Adobe's recent software updates have a strong emphasis on AI, impacting nearly all creative cloud software, including Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, and more. In this video, however, we'll focus on the new features of Illustrator 2024. They might not be ready for production use yet, but they do provide a glimpse into how designers might approach their work in the future. So let's dive in. Let's start with a more exciting feature first, and that's the text to vector feature. <laughs> yep, you heard that right. We can now use text prompts to create vector graphics. The feature is still in its infancy, but it's already clear how powerful it can be. To work with it, we can either bring in the text to vector window, or we can just draw a rectangle, and then we'll get the familiar taskbar that's already available in Photoshop. We have several modes to choose from, and that's dependent on the type of graphic we want to create. Let's start with a pattern option first, and let's see how close we can get to a pattern I worked on a couple of months ago. So I'm gonna type cute cat heads, white and orange, and hit enter. The processing usually doesn't take that long, but I'm sure now with everyone testing the feature, it might take a while. Okay, and we're done. As is the case with Photoshop, we have three options to choose from. The style and the overall design is not what I had in mind, but still, we got some vector graphics back in a matter of seconds. You might have noticed that as I was uh, switching between the patterns, Illustrator automatically added them into the swatches panel. So if I create another rectangle, I can immediately apply all these new patterns just by selecting the appropriate swatch. Okay, now let me show you the pattern I created so you can get an idea of the look I was going for. As you can see, if we have to nail a specific style, it's not that easy. But on the other hand, the AI design can be a good starting point for our own creations. I could see myself using one of the AI designs as a rough guide and then heavily modifying things to get to the final graphic. Relying on the AI vectors alone is not such a great idea, and I'll show you why in a little bit. But before we do that, let's see if we can actually get closer to my design. There's a handy little feature that unfortunately is not available on the pattern setting, so we'll have to switch to another mode. Let's go with subject. This picker here is what we want. As the tooltip says, it's a style picker, and if we select an already existing artwork with it, Illustrator's AI will try to imitate it. So I'll pick my design here, and let's type now cute cat head white and orange. And let's see what sort of result we can get. Okay, it's still not exactly what I had in mind, but as you can see, we're slowly getting there. Now, here's something to keep in mind, and this is why I said that we should not really rely on the AI generated vectors. Illustrator is doing a good job overall trying to create clean vector lines. Things are grouped nicely together, and the paths don't have an extreme amount of points. So that's great, but here's the dangerous part, especially when it comes to new Illustrator users. As optimized as these vectors might be, they're still quite a bit messy. Let's take as an example this little pattern created by the AI. From afar, everything looks fine, but once we zoom in, the issues can be easily seen. Notice, for example, that the circle is not really a circle, and it kind of blends with parts of the star shape. As a matter of fact, most of the star shapes look very wonky. Notice also that we have some rogue shapes that don't really add anything to the design. Let's now have a look at another example. If we break down the artwork, we will find two backgrounds. One is the complete background, and there's another one with holes in it. For me, as a designer and a long-time Illustrator user, it's no big deal. I think of text-to-vector as an exploratory tool rather than a final artwork tool. If, for example, I find a text prompt interesting, I would just redesign everything from scratch. That way, I can have complete creative control and a clean and optimized file. But new users might not go through that process. They might just type something in the text field play with a prompt a little bit, and then call things done. 
So I'm afraid that text to vector could foster a generation of lazy designers. But of course, it's too early to tell. But besides that, AI generated content can be a huge time saver. For example, let me show you one of my favorite use cases. Let's switch to the icon option and let's type ranch and black and white. And in a few seconds, we have three new icons. That is absolutely wonderful. Again, all of the designs have some issues here and there, and I would never really use them like that in a final design, but it's a great starting point. And it's also a great way to populate rough mockups that will be refined later on. Let's try another one. Let's do globe. The second design <laughs> doesn't make much sense and the third one is a little bit wonky. But again, they're great as an initial idea. And I'm sure as the AI models improve, things will get better and better. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. What does that mean about you as a designer? Are we going to be replaced by an AI? To be honest, I don't see that happening at all. I see these AI tools as a great way to enhance a designer's abilities. It's a brainstorming tool that helps us quickly iterate and get to a final design much faster than before. If you're afraid of all these AI tools, my suggestion would be the following. Try it out, see how it can fit your workflow, and try and figure out if you can somehow take advantage of AI's quick iterative process. I'm sure just by experimenting with it, you will find some creative ways to use it. Think of it as just another tool in your toolbox. Anyway, that's text to vector. Let's now talk about another interesting feature. The idea behind this one is great, but the feature is still in beta, so things don't work as expected. So, what is it about? It has to do with mockups. I think every designer has to do at some point in a project's life. We have a cool design and we want to somehow showcase it in a real world setting. And the idea here is to offer a way to do both of these things in one app instead of having to jump back and forth between Illustrator and Photoshop. So let's see how that works. We have our vector artwork and a photograph. Let's duplicate the artwork and roughly resize it to the dimensions of the picture frame. Okay, perfect. Now let's select both. And now we can either bring up the mockup panel from the window menu, or we can go to object, mockup, and then make. I prefer the panel method, so let's hit the big mockup button and let's see what we're going to get. It'll take some time to process. And here's the point where we stumble on the fact that this is an early beta stage feature. No matter how much we try to resize and rotate the artwork, it won't really fit correctly into the picture frame. The perspective is wrong, and we cannot really make the artwork clip correctly. If we try to help the algorithm a little bit by defining the artwork area, things are a little bit better. We still don't get the correct perspective, but at least the artwork clips in the correct area. As you can see though, the edges are not clean at all. Not to mention that we're completely missing the shadows on the picture frame. So even if the edges were clean, we would still be lagging behind as far as realism goes. And this is the point where I'm not exactly sure why this feature exists. We can already do this type of work in Photoshop and in a more easy and customized way. Sure, we might have to go through two different programs to do that, but for me, that's absolutely fine. As a matter of fact, let's go into Photoshop and see how much better the process is there. The photo is already set up with a smart object, so all we have to do is double click the smart layer, drag the artwork on that file, resize, hit save, and that's it. We're done. The final image doesn't suffer from weird perspective issues. It has clean edges, and most importantly, it feels like the artwork is actually part of the image. And this is the simple version of a mockup file. We can have Photoshop mockup templates that are incredibly powerful because they're extremely customizable. Let me show you an example of that, but let's start with Illustrator first. Like before, we select both objects and then hit mockup. 
In this scenario, the feature struggles to find the correct surfaces, and because of the complexity of the artwork and the different surfaces of the photo, Illustrator struggles to keep up. Even though I'm moving the mouse around, the artwork is still <laughs> calculating. And the end result is not good at all. Now let's go back to Photoshop. Like before, we load up the smart object, drag the artwork in it, resize it, hit save, and we're done. Simple, fast, and with an excellent final result. And the cool thing here is that pretty much everything is customizable. We can move the pen around, we can disable it, we can grab the clamp and rotate it around. We can even change the colors of the clipboard. All of these things are impossible to do with Illustrator's mock-up feature. So what's the thinking behind it? If we can already create amazing mock-ups with Photoshop, why do we have to reinvent the wheel? Illustrator's mock-up feature feels like this elaborate Rube Goldberg type of machine that tries to do something in the most complicated way possible, even though a simple and elegant solution already exists. Anyway, that's just my opinion. I would say try it out and see how it works out for you. Personally, I wasn't able to get something good out of it, so my workflow for mockups won't change anytime soon. It's still going to be Photoshop all the way. And that's it. These are the two main big features for Illustrator 2024. I think the text to vector feature is going to be a game changer. It still needs to be refined, but I think it will have an impact on a designer's day-to-day -day life, even in this beta state. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Do you think we're doomed that everyone's going to be replaced by a machine? Let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.